Hi, good evening. This is Sarah Chiu. Uh, welcome uh, to my program, Basket Starfish, our language core. Um, tonight, I am going to talk a little bit about uh, the universal symbols of energy. As you can see from my bag, I have written them out. Um, this is Chinese. This is the ancient Phoenician, later turned into uh, Latin. And then this is, you can look at it as photosynaintic. And also uh, when it's Aleph, it goes to this side, okay? And then when it's uh, read as Ka, as the So in the Egyptian hieroglyph, then it goes to this side and become the K. That's why the world is divided into two different systems. One is started with the K, Kake, Ki, Koku, like that. The other system, you know, Actually started with the A and the B because A is seen as the unseen energy that uh, took over and lead the alphabetic cycle and then this B is actually found in the um, Egyptian hieroglyph and then um, this is how why uh, in the Western system A and B leads the, uh, on uh, the alphabetic system this forms our two ways of writing and the Chinese stands actually in the middle this is a, a Chinese symbol of unseen energy and also the self and then um, there is a very uh, interesting sign that when you see that the foot is actually endowed with the like a bullhorn head so it is like you know giving it a soul and energy to move right so I will start today's uh, program so today you will see a lot of um, uh, head and foot symbol and and they are actually the ancient uh, way of expressing their idea of energy that motivate us and also motivate the whole cosmos okay I will start uh, our slideshow today Okay, um, again, I will show you the basket starfish so you have a rough idea uh, what I'm talking about. So we all, I believe that we all shared one ancient core that every single so-called family are just a branch of the whole uh, thing. Uh, each of us is not a separate family tree um, because if we believe in that, it actually ushers in human hierarchy. We are on just in different stages of development. You know, we go back and forth and we communicate with the with each other and then uh, I think uh, the idea of family language family trees need to be changed um, that we pay too much attention to the grammar and grammars are precisely where what separates us from one branch to another and I have dug out tons of uh, similar sounds and words um, in vocabularies in different uh, systems so uh, to compare them to show you that we actually follow uh, closely with each other Okay, so I will start today's uh, slides. And um, today's first slide is actually I try to finish what I didn't finish last week. Again, uh, if I'm going too fast, please uh, type in YouTube, type in the family, I mean the program name, then you can uh, watch it again because I am forced to go very fast to jam all these ideas into 27 minutes, okay? So uh, last week I couldn't finish this slide, it's about the creation of a gender imbalanced world, how it was gradually created, okay? So at the pagan uh, Greek world, you know, they uh, call the, the gods Dios and that's why you see this triangle is uh, takes a very took a very important part in all the daily life because people actually recognize the triangle. At the beginning, it was closely connected with the female pubic triangle, but then when it turns upside down, become a kind of a more a macho sign. So, um, but then uh, as uh, monotheism uh, grows and uh, gradually uh, they have to change it in a very subtle way. But if you don't know how you don't know how to read or write at that time, so it doesn't really make much uh, difference to you because you will pronounce them very similarly. One is Dios and the other one is Dios. So uh, you can see that it's actually very, very similar in sound. It's just that the scribes will be writing them, you know, differently. So um, in the ancient uh, Greek alphabets, you know, the TH, the theta, actually has four different forms, you know, but now I will start with one of the form. Uh, if you look at it, 
you will, you can understand it neutrally as an eye or then uh, when we're talking about the eye I will draw a few examples to show you that you know in the other part of the world you know uh, we also have very similar idea and this is what we call man in, and obviously this is uh, they show how the center of something you know spinning around this this has a sound called man and it's actually uh, you can find it in Sanskrit mandam means you go slowly continuously and non-stop you know f almost like forever and of course you know it stayed in English as maintain the first part main is actually came from this one and then uh, just by the eye itself in Chinese is mok okay and then um, in Egyptian hieroglyph the same symbol is has actually carry a sound of ma ma is actually to see to look and then in in uh, Greek if you speak Greek you know that Marty is I so you know you can see that you know they all share you know very very similar sound and then let me come back to this symbol explaining to you you know how the ancient build and explain uh, of their God and um, I show you uh, again and again this symbol is the Egyptian hieroglyph like human being um, the uh, scholars will explain to you it is like um, a sun you know with its ray coming down but of course you know I am a female I can tell you that we can look at it you know either neutral as an eye as source you can actually look at it in two, uh, in many different way two of them were just uh, the the well the liquid and then the other one is the sun you know uh, because the scholar will only explain to you you know one side of the story but if you look at the language itself in uh, in Hebrew and Arabic when you say ein and even in Chinese an is actually the source of a spring okay the eye of a spring okay the an I ein, they are all the same so um, the Chinese actually have a very uh, similar word you know written like this it also means you know the multitude of people when this means human being this means multitude of people can you see the similarity and then if you look at it um, you, uh, on the other side as well you will see that there is a fountain you know water coming out we actually has the sound of fong like uh, in Latin fong okay it definitely means water also you know even in Chinese so you can see that you can explain in various way even in ancient time in, but very very similarly and then I want to focus you know in uh, two words putting them side by side when they started writing in non-pictorial form okay this is Hebrew Ra as you know that Ra in if you are Egyptian you also understand it as the sun god right but then Ra in um in ancient, I mean, in Hebrew, it actually means to see. That's similar to, you know, the eye, you know, the sun, you can actually see. But the other side, Ra, uh, you can see that in writing itself, you know, they change the alphabet to indicate to themselves, you know, visually. Uh, this is the very positive A, and this is a very uh, kind of a little bit negative I right there. Uh, even though it's the same vowel, just R and I, and then, uh, but then they always use it for female uh, indicator okay so uh, it actually means bad and evil look at that one is very positive I the other one is uh, ev something evil and uh, but then uh, still you know I don't want to uh, draw it to you as if everything is 100% this way or that way and actually the ancient might not be expressing extremes you know because a lot of the subtle meaning actually lies in between and um, you will see that the A itself you know came from the Aleph from the proto-Sinaitic of course it's a bullhead right there and then it's actually very male, uh, male word right so if you look at this side and this one actually come from a little hole and then it's a pubic uh, area triangle right there and then it's still like the valley thing and, and it is the female valley, the female triangle, it is a very female word, okay? So uh, you can, if you look into Hebrew, you will also see that sign also used, you know, to, to mean valley, okay? And it is a very important component of the word valley in Hebrew. So you will see that one side is male, the other is female. 
email, right? So, but I will show you other words, you know, existed in the same culture that tells you that uh, nothing is that absolute. Because in Ra, uh, when they put in a female H at the back, it actually means com some intimate companion. Of course, most of the time it will be pointing to a female uh, companion, okay? And then, but then at the same time, because the other side means to see, the Ra on this side actually to distinguish this royal Ra, the king, uh, I mean the sun itself, the, the sea, that they actually use it for a very humble uh, thing as a shepherd, you know. Of course, a shepherd is a keeper um, and, and normally keeping an eye on the on the, on the sheep, right? And that's why, you know, you got one, one uh, Ra like this to see, the other would naturally go to become the evil eye. The Greek will still call this Marty, you know, this is very common um, charm in the Middle East, you know, the one eye. And even now, if you go, you lived in the uh, Middle East, you know, people will still swear under the name of this eye. So uh, this is a very powerful symbol. And then um, I want to show you the second, you know, uh, tether symbol. Other than the one single eye, you will see that there was a time that, you know, it actually become, you know, a, a two part you know uh, alphabet actually now the theos you know this one the god word actually came from this you know uh, and i think subtly it actually still uh, bury you know the understanding of the ancient that it contains you know two parts instead of one male part okay because if you look at this you know this is heather and and she actually had horns you know so we are now living far away for, away from nature we forgot that sometimes cows themselves also have horn and you will see that also part of the name itself is the also uh, the same uh, sound the same alphabet right there and then uh, there's the word comes by you know one way it exists in the western uh, in the Arabic word though it actually means the bull but then um, and you can see that uh, far far away uh, in the ancient time Heather it was actually a female and then you can also look at it either as a male or female not necessarily whenever you see horn they would be male right so this uh, theta right there the th symbol actually might still you know like the chinese were sharing you know the duality you know identity instead of the one single mon mon mono god okay so you will see that uh, that's the uh, Chinese way, the Eastern way of understanding the cosmos. And how about the other that comes by? You will, if you go into the Greek, you know, you understand, you read about how Aristotle uh, tried to explain, you know, the world and, and all this being, you will see that they actually, he actually explained about the four causes, you know, of our being. So um, I will not go into that, you know, but you will see that, you know, th there will be this one, two, and three four parts you know so the ancient were actually developing all this symbol according to the fashion of the philosophy that developed at the same time at uh, at their own time okay so but if I look at that you know this actually is an ancient Hebrew uh, tet uh, alphabet the T also okay so but if I show you the modern French word tet is actually a head okay and this is the if you look at it as the uh, Egypt, I mean linear B which is also a proto-Greek symbol it is pronounced as car as well but if, if I give you a Greek word kafali it also means head interestingly you know both of these actually means head but I also give you some Chinese symbol now you're looking at Chinese right Right there and in Cantonese we will say Tao. Tao is actually mean the head exactly is the tat the symbol is the same and then we also have a ker ger sound this is gap right there for us it means the head the chief the first the boss okay you will see that we all have the similar symbol similar sound but we just use them at a different time in a little bit uh, different sense okay so I will carry on with the uh, Hebrew ancient world. So, uh, of course, you know, you will know that this is this Al is uh, the way they address God or Elohim. And you will see that at that time they were still, you know, uh, fluctuating between a single one or a plural form. This is either a dual or 
uh, or plural form okay so um, you will see that uh, in the Chinese world of course everything is dual and and um, definitely they will have some kind of communication uh, before you know uh, before all this can develop forward because I believe that no culture can lock themselves up and develop a lot of interesting uh, uh, culture uh, every culture you know uh, become very interesting only when they interact with each other like what you see America now it becomes so prosperous only because you know every country came here to bring the best you know to to develop right here okay so I come back to this uh, slide right there so uh, you if you look at L right there the uh, Aleph right there came from this animal right there. So you will see that in ancient time they actually uh, put animal first, you know, as this image of God. So um, and but then as time went by, you will see that L actually came from this pictograph right there. This A, this is L. Okay. So you will see that they instead of worshiping the animal, they started to worship the human being. It is actually something like the shepherd, you know, the leader who leads the the. the the, the alpha bull okay so it is from here that we gradually uh, develop into what we know now as the world from the worshiping of animal we begin to worship this anthropomorphic worship you know for, uh, from the animal to the shepherd that's why Jesus was always compared to as the shepherd so but if you worship animal there's no way that you can avoid worshiping the female because um, only the female animal can bring in uh, abundance and multitude of the hurt so no one will actually just uh, worship the male because the male doesn't produce you know so if they die everything dies so so it is from this change of concept that that, that our God actually changed uh, gender from the very important female to the mono monotheism male God okay so this is the formation and the creation of a gender imbalanced world and then of course from then on the patriarchal world you know started to to took hold and ended up what we have now this day so again you know uh, when we were talking about animal I want to show you how in the Bible the uh, what they said about the worshiping the golden calf if you look at that word it's actually started with this very female sign right there not the Aleph but the Ein okay so uh, if, is the, uh, if you pro want to pronounce it it's something like Ago but interestingly if you are uh, Arab Arabs, you know, you speak Arabic. Ago is still, you know, uh, the word, you know, for a leader, for a chief. But of course, you know, now Ago become a male uh, leader, a male chief, no longer a, a, a female calf. So you understand that this calf actually are a hypha. It is a female calf, not a male calf, as you would imagine. But I will show you how interesting, you know, certain symbol can be uh, all grouped together. Now, um. Before uh, the the uh, alphabet become this uh, pubic uh, form, it's actually like this. It's ein. It's really like a fountain, like a hole, like a source. And then of course, you know, sometimes it can be written as the ein, really ein, the I also, but. When you talk about a golden calf, everybody automatically have that in their head, okay? So even if you see the calf, you know, don't automatically think that it is a male because, you know, at the very beginning, that golden calf was actually, uh, should be actually a female. But uh, in ignoring that, I want you to see, you know, how the, uh, so from the Sumerian, this cow form is already closely related to the sun. So look at this. This, this is uh, the pictograph this is the later cuneiform of Sumerian and this is just the reverse of the cow symbol and becomes the sun but the cuneiform becomes a little bit different you know but then you will see that the cow and the sun was closely related that's why in in the Egyptian culture you will still see that Isis on or, or Heather still is either the sun or the cow you will always see the symbol side by side okay but uh, uh, if you look on from here you will see that gradually from the female entity it will slowly turn into the male entity as we understand today okay so in the Sumerian world this has to uh, hold the 
a sound of or of okay now all this sound will be uh will be long to the um patriarchal world to call their father but very early on this is a cow itself this should be just the mother okay so even in china in the southern part of china abu uh, can mean a mother it's not a father okay so this is wood this is a sun this is talking about the dawn the sun's ray wood wood uh, take a note that all I'm showing you are the vowel sounds, right? You see how important that vowel sound is related to the living symbol of the uh, unseen energy. So uh, when you talk about that, I'll give you a, a, a Latin word, aurora. You see, Au, aurora is actually, of course, the dawn, the dawn, and Au, in Hebrew, you see the A right there is actually also the light of the dawn, the 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 the, the light. Okay, and then um, if you look at this symbol as a chemistry symbol, it is an owl symbol. What is owl symbol? But aurum, aurum is gold. Okay, in Latin. Okay, so you will still have this golden calf, golden the dawn. All this idea were jammed together since very ancient time. Only you want to understand it. Uh, feel philosophically, religiously, or chemically. So, um, in, I mean, in chemistry. So it's all linked together. So if you speak German, Aug is actually the eye. Look at that. You can also understand as an eye, but an eye of a fountain or, or a real physical eye is a different thing, okay? So um, and this is Chinese right there, Ngau, okay? We definitely carry that sound, Ngau. And then the, uh, the German word Aura is actually a, a real bull, a type of um, ancient bull that has already extinct. Um, you will pay a lot of attention to this owl sound, okay? And this little sign right there, of course, you will understand it as an alf, you know, which later become your al aleph, and then the alpha, and then the A sign, you know, you will see that as an A, okay? So I will show you a little uh, Chinese writing right there. It is um, a depiction of a piglet with that little uh, unseen energy symbol inside. This is, um, the, it means beginning, it also means piglet, okay? So um, act all, uh, definitely that little symbol means the alma, the soul, and then um, the aura and in Latin also means the breeze, and which links to the uh, Greek word animals. Animals actually means all this, the, the, the light, the wind, the air, the breeze, and also the soul. So you will see that, see that most of these words also uh, separately means all this. They just appear in different cultures. And then uh, in Greek iris is actually air and then also ether. Can you see that all these words with energy will start with the one vowel sound no matter what culture it is in? And then aima, aima in Greek will be the blood. They, they believe where the uh, the soul live in is the blood. And anima in uh, in Latin is of course become your word animal that has a soul that has some living entity inside. And atman in in um, Sanskrit is actually the soul, the real soul. Okay, Atman, you see, it's just a, a slight spell difference, the E and, and the A, okay? Atman in German is actually the breathe and breath, okay? And what else? But the, when you breathe in, you take in the soul, okay? When you breathe out the last, uh, last breath, then you are dead, okay? So this is closely related to that energy. And action, and all, that means definitely action, right? And then autos, and, and, and in Greek, and actually uh, become your, uh, the word automatical you know that means something that move on its own you know nothing can move unless it has an engine or it has a soul okay so uh, English action and alive the a actually function there to tell you that it is it has a living soul and then you go back to very ancient time the ah in ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, it represents itself as a bird. The bird actually flies also in the air, the, represents the wind. So you will see that this ah 
actually also is the breath that comes out the ang later uh, takes this symbol but if you look at it carefully the ang is actually a very physical symbol that represents the unseen air can you see that the god actually put that ang in front of the nose of, of the pharaoh for him to breathe in okay all this you know all pointed to this very inter interesting circle right there it's just the origin it is all our human human endeavor to understand the origin of life you know the soul that we call it so um, this is my also my endeavor to explain to you why all this vowel sound okay now let's go to the the, the other side you know the K sound or the G sound and then as I said you know this is the ancient Egyptian uh, ancient Sumerian um, G or G okay so um, you will see that also that bull sign from here this little grass it actually starts to uh, use the bull head to to show that this is the symbol of life and this is Kanu Kanu can you see the symbol right there this is Assyrian Akkadian okay so this means king so the sound still retains you know it's, um, but only that the writing system changes but if they still uh, retained in cuneiform or pictograph you can still see that uh, little symbol right there so the Chinese also share very similar sim sign right there it's a uh, sky right there it means uh, tons of reed grass okay and then you will see that that uh, bull horn act also appear in our uh, grain and this is actually what we understand as the wheat okay so but if you look at the the wheat itself you know if you understand the symbol they always understand that there is a growth power inside and then for us you know as the writing developed we gradually settle with two writing but the sound still retains you know a gay or k it actually means grain but uh, I'll show you on Hebrew word is also uh, pronounced as gera. Gera is also mean grain. Look at that. And then I highlight the uh, uh, the a right aleph right there in Hebrew. That means you know even in writing itself, it also put that little energy a uh, right there to sh to give that life to the grain itself. It's very very interesting how writing work at the very beginning. Um, so this is the the a that they secretly put in there to show the grain so it is exactly like the Chinese writing like the Sumerian writing okay so the Chinese also have this gay right there for us it actually means you know the key the cause the 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 the, the gist itself you know the gist is a mutation of the sound from guys in 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 german so you will see that this is ka sound still really maintained in the very very important the cause of everything okay so um the thing goes on it seems that i won't have enough time again today uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, I will continue next week. Thank you very much.